Hey there, we're back with another episode of Larry's Workbench, where we are working on projects that are fun and interesting, and hopefully you guys think that they're fun and interesting also. I'm hanging out here with my buddy Floyd D. And today, today's a great episode because today we are actually gonna run our first Python code. And you're gonna see the script, you're gonna see how it runs, and you're gonna see how it literally controls the robot to do his thing. Okay, so I'm gonna back up just, just one minute. I do want to thank you guys for all the likes and the comments and the support that this project's been getting because we really appreciate it. Uh, it's what keeps me enthusiastic about the project. So leave me a comment and you can go ahead and also share this with somebody that might be interested. The project has kind of started to go worldwide. So we've been picked up in some tech blogs all over. You guys are in Poland, you're in China, you're in Italy, UK and all over the world are, are kind of starting to watch this India. And I really appreciate you guys. And if I'm doing something that is interesting to you, let me know. Let me know, because that is what keeps me motivated. Okay, quick review. We've talked about the hardware that Floyd is made out of. We've talked about the Raspberry Pi, the small single board computer that powers all of his local functions. And we've talked about commissioning the Pi with an SD card. We've talked about connecting the Pi to Wi-Fi locally. I'm fortunate I have very good Wi-Fi here where I'm at at the robotics labs. And we've talked about connecting to the Raspberry Pi via the computer, uh, something called virtual network computing. So that lets me connect up the keyboard, the mouse and the monitor. And now, and setting up a development environment. Now today, like I said, we're gonna run our first Python script and you're gonna get to see that. So Python is a fantastic programming language. It was, it's designed to do a lot of different things it can exist at various points in the software stack, and it's great for beginners. Now, I am a beginner, so that's why I chose Python. Interestingly, it was named after Monty Python, which is a British comedy troupe. If you're not familiar with their material, you really should check it out because it's like nothing else. And uh, in my childhood, I remember them as being hysterical, and I, they're still hysterical. So check out Monty Python. That's where the name came from. And so we're going to talk about how that is operating in the development environment on the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is named because it can kind of run Python pretty well. And that's a little play on words also. So you do see a lot of that in the software development world. Okay, I'm going to rotate the camera around here so we can see all that. Okay, yeah, that's okay. That's pretty good. Now you can see this is the Python wallpaper and the startup screen. I am running a piece of software called Thony. And Thony is a development environment that can be used to execute the Python. So you type your Python into Thony, and then when you click the green button, it executes the code. It's pretty straightforward. So let's bring that up right here. And we can see that this is the code that I drafted this morning, this little script. It's uh, 16 lines long. If you take out the blank spaces, it's I think 11 lines long. And this is the script we're gonna go through this. Hopefully you guys can sort of zoom in on that and see what it's doing. And I'm gonna walk you right through it. One thing we're gonna get kind of out of the way is we're gonna talk about importing libraries of functions. And that is something where I talked about standing on the shoulders of giants. Once you're in Python, Python is a simple and straightforward language, but you have access to all these libraries that have been programmed by other humans. And you have access to them and you can use them in your code. So now you can leverage, some people might call it cheating, I call it leverage. And you, you, because honestly, that's how programming works these days. So you have access to things that have been developed by other people over the course of probably decades, to be honest. So here you can see, and I don't want to get too wonky on this, typically with a library, you have to install the library of functions onto the Raspberry Pi and use a, you use a software called PIP. You use a command called PIP to install that library. Once it's installed in your code, you have to import it. And the reason why I'm going through all this is because we're importing a library called Board, B-O-A-R-D. Board is the library that allows me to call a function or issue a command, essentially, in Python, 
and it translates it into the voltages that are required to operate Floyd's motors and servos. So you can see we do this little import routine right here. And then we say while true, we're going to get a key input from the keyboard. And then if the input is a four, we're going to do something. If the input is a five, we're going to do something else. And if the input is a six, we're going to do something else. So this is our first Python script. I'm proud of this. And like I said, I did write this actually with ChatGPT. I used ChatGPT to write it. I didn't really write it, to be honest. I just clicked into ChatGPT what I wanted the code to do. It gave me the syntax back. And I did kind of work on it and tweak it a little bit. And now let's just execute that by clicking the green button. There we go. We get a prompt down here. Press a number key to rotate the arm or Q to exit. So I'm going to press 4, enter. And look at that. It's executing. That's so cool. Okay, back to center position. So what's really going on there is right here, if I press the number four, board set PWM servo pulse six, 500, 500. Okay, those are three parameters that get passed to this command. Six refers to this rotational servo as opposed to Floyd's other servos. This is number one, number three, number four, etc. 500 tells me the position I want it to go to. And for whatever reason, that goes from 500 to 2,500. That's the way it was programmed uh, by whoever wrote this board library. And the next 500 tells me how fast I want to do it. And I've got it set at 500. I don't know if that's in milliseconds or whatever, but uh, that is how that functions. Let's see that again. Oh, that's fantastic. So that is literally 11 lines of code that allows Floyd to get an input in this case, it's an input that's coming from a keyboard and allows him to execute a command. So if you're interested in any of this, you want to see the next video, please like, subscribe. And I've got another video right up here. I do believe it's right up here. Go ahead and click on that one. Thanks for watching.